Hello everybody, welcome back. Please leave a like so this video is recommended to others and hit that subscribe button so you can keep seeing videos just like- Could you imagine being strapped into a ride, heart pounding with excitement, hands up and ready to be launched up to 300 feet into the sky at 100 miles per hour? But just as you're about to take off, you hear a loud snap and see the cable falling apart. These thrill seekers experienced that exact moment with an unexpected scare. As one of the main cables on the park's popular slingshot ride shredded just before launch, the woman recording the video and her friend were going to ride the ride but decided not to because of a bad feeling. In the video, you can hear her state, we just dodged we just death. Dodged death. <laughs> we just dodged death! Following the incident, the riders were given refunds. Cobra Adventure Park issued a statement expressing their relief that no one was injured and their commitment to addressing the issue. They emphasized their focus on guest safety. The park announced that they were conducting a thorough investigation to determine the cause of the cable failure. This is exactly why I do not mess with these. I have never been on one and I will never get on one. No, 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 no. Another final destination scenario. No. Oh my God, I can't see anything. My Oh my God, my mirror. I oh. caught that on video. Ah. What do I do? What the f What the f <laughs> My f mirror! My car sounds like it's getting riddled with rocks! Yo! What the f I would be so mad. Ah, uh, this is gold. <laughs> Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> oh my god. Oh no. Whoa, dude. Jesus, dude, that's terrifying. I always wonder why the first thing people do when something like this happens is start recording instead of, I don't know, maybe calling the police or something. <laughs> Taking out my phone and recording something crazy is usually the last thing on my mind. Oh, that's not ominous at all. Personally, I wouldn't go in there, but you do you. Man spots massive alligator while hiking. Dang, that's a chunky boy. So this hiking trail's not for beginners. Yeah, that would be my last time hiking there. Yo, imagine coming face to face with bro in the wild and he tries to fight you. Hey, yo, <laughs> never mind, what the? That was pretty smooth. This dude probably weighs 500 pounds. I can't do that. That, that was pretty good. <laughs> Raise your hand if you had no idea these two astronauts were stuck in outer space. Go on, don't be shy. I know you haven't heard about it. I can't figure out why this isn't bigger news, but Alas, these two astronauts are stranded in outer space since June 14th, and NASA is like, oh, we don't know. Oh, uh oh, what do we, uh, we don't know, we don't know. So from what I understand, NASA was like, hey, let's send some uh, astronauts into outer space because that's what we do. 
So they got a hold of Boeing, and Boeing was like, hey, we'll, uh, we'll construct that ship for you. We're going <laughs> to use some uh, used parts, though, if that's okay. And NASA was like, yeah, that's fine. So they did that. And lo and behold, in May, when they were going to launch the first time, they, they realized there was a problem. So they stopped, fixed it, and then they were going to launch again June 1st. Three minutes and 50 seconds before launch, they were like, uh-oh, 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 there's another problem. We got we to gotta fix this. So they did. They fixed it, and they launched again the next week. It was supposed to be an eight-day mission. They were supposed to come home June 14th. They're still out there. The amount of people that are just going to be hearing about it for the first time, this should be big news. We have two <laughs> astronauts right now as I'm making this stupid TikTok that are up up in outer space like Boy, I hope I ho boy, I hope this I hope this works out. Yeah, I thought the same thing. I thought they had already brought these people home. You would think that of any company that you would ask to manufacture anything for you it would not be boeing not right now anyways jesus boeing <laughs> the number of f-ups this entire year that's got to be a new record do you know raccoons are starting to attack tesla cybertrucks after they think it looks like a dumpster and are trying to pry it open we <laughs> first learned this when this twitter user posted these two pictures and said the cybertruck's bed vault is raccoon proof and you can tell from the two pictures the raccoons were all over the bed of that truck trying to pry open the cover and you can tell from the second picture they did some pretty serious damage where they bit off chunks so they could get their hands in there and try to pry it open but this got people wondering why are the raccoons attacking Tesla Cybertrucks when they never attack other people's cars until someone made the connection that, you know, the Tesla Cybertruck looks awfully similar to a dumpster. And the reason they were trying to pry open the truck bed flap is because they thought that was the cover to the dumpster and they were trying to get to that sweet, sweet garbage. And while I honestly think that the Tesla Cybertruck is kind of a cool looking car just on the ambition of it all, I think this Twitter user put it perfectly when he said, oh, Tesla Cybertruck owners will say, no, 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 it does not look like a dumpster while the raccoons are out here saying, gosh, Dang, this dumpster's hard to open. Let's just hope this isn't a common occurrence for all Cybertruck owners who take their trucks camping, but I think it's bound to happen again. But that's my opinion. What do y'all think? Damn. Imagine getting roasted by a raccoon. <laughs> Why is this so hilarious, dude? Even the raccoons think it's a dumpster fire. Wait, is that soup? That's a brave group of people right there. And I thought eating at the buffet was risky, bro. Sometimes that risk is a little worth it though. I do crave it. Yo, what? That one, I didn't know they got that big. That's big. Jesus, how big do these things get? They're so ominous looking, man. Whoa, look how big this one is. Jesus. They can reach 16.5 feet long, including the tail. There are reports of giant stingrays weighing up to 1,300 pounds. I did not know they got that big. They look like aliens or flying saucers or a Roomba. Oh man, we got another one here. Painting robot. Mm. Okay, so we've seen the lawn mowing one. Now this painting one. There's the burger flipping one. Dude, we're getting replaced everywhere. Decade long cold case takes a bizarre twist at this former no frills supermarket. Council Bluffs police believe Larry Marillo Moncada climbed a cooler and somehow fell behind it, leaving him trapped. Police say the gap was about 18 inches between the cooler and the wall. I was informed that employees would randomly go up at different times and be up on the unit. And uh, we believe that he may have accidentally fell behind the unit. Employees say Larry wasn't scheduled to work that day, so no one knew he was there. Hours before he vanished, his parents told police he was upset and ran out of their home. The mother, she kind of had an idea that he had never left the no frills. I don't know how she came up with that idea, but um, you know, they were, 
They were pretty upset. Investigators believe his was an accident. They call this one of the oddest cases they've worked on. You don't hear about these type of cases, people found in walls, especially in this area. So that's, that would be the odd part about it. We have missing persons all the time, but uh, you know, this is just unique. Unique? That's one way of putting it. Did nobody ever smell anything? There had to be a smell. 10 years, dude. Nobody saw any security footage of him going back into the store. The clip was captured at 3 in the morning on April 9th, 2023. It happened in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The homeowner was sleeping when the clip was recorded. It wasn't until he woke up and saw a notification on his phone that he found out about it. He reviewed the footage, horrified. This is what he saw. A woman is shown trying multiple different keys to get into the house and even looking around for a hidden one. claimed that he had never seen this woman before. He said that she later started throwing rocks at his car and trying those locks. It's likely she was under the influence of something. Multiple times she tries to insert keys into the doorbell camera itself. After a few minutes she walks off and was never seen on the property again. Her intentions are unknown. Her stupid keychain, dude. It looks like a pew pew. Probably not a good idea to have one. This is why I love ring doorbells. You can see them, but they can't see you. This is why you don't open strange boxes covered in wax. TikTok user GBTV bought a house on auction, hoping to turn a profit after some quick renovations. That is, until they begin to hear thumping coming from the attic. So they decide to explore, and it does not go well. Because after finding strange objects strewn about, they narrow down the location of where the thumping was just coming from, and that's when they find a locked box in the wall with strange symbols all around it. After managing to get it open, they find a planchette like one you would find with a Ouija board. In addition, they find a key attached to a chain and a locket of human hair. Feeling a bit creeped out, they decide to just continue renovations as normal. But after lifting up the floorboards, he finds another box covered in dark wax with a wax seal on top. Not knowing what he found was a Dybbuk box, he decides to open it. Here's that clip. Take a look. We only wanted to show you why you should be careful buying a house at auction. The realtors definitely didn't mention this in the advert. We're a bit concerned about who used to live here. Apparently the writing marked on the lid translates to don't let her speak. Now a Dybbuk box is said to contain a malicious spirit that can sometimes possess you. The only update I found was that they burned the Ouija board. But let me know, what do you think? Well, that's it. You done screwed up. If the house wasn't haunted before, it is now. It looks like they went through a lot of trouble to seal that up, so it was probably a bad idea to open that. Okay, weirdo. <laughs> oh no. I didn't realize what this was going to turn into. Dang, bro looks so proud. That's hilarious. Russ McCamey from McCamey Manor, one of America's most infamous haunted house attractions, was just arrested. So if you don't know Russ McCamey, this is a long, dark rabbit hole. Basically, he runs an attraction called McCamey Manor. This is run on his property out of his house. And it has been billed as the most extreme horror experience you can possibly put yourself through. Basically, when you sign up for this, you sign your life away. Inside of this attraction where you go on your own personal tour, they abuse people. They subject them to horrific mental They force them to eat things for them and do all sorts of just horrific stuff. So for years, people have been questioning how this whole thing is legal because it really does sit on the very edge of what's legal and what's illegal when it comes to physical abuse. But just a few days ago, Russ McCamey, the guy that owns and operates this place, was arrested. But it wasn't for charges based on his haunted house attraction. He has actually been charged with second-degree attempted murder, rape, 
and domestic. These charges are coming from Russ's ex-girlfriend, who's claiming that he tried to kill her on multiple occasions. And the arrest affidavit even states that at one point, Russ allegedly screwed her out of consciousness. And on Friday, July 19th, the police said that Russ had his girlfriend and screwed her again which would be the second time that he did so. So we're gonna see how this case plays out. I will keep y'all updated, but this is shocking news. I mean, I've followed this story for almost 10 years now. I've always thought what he was doing was extremely bizarre and disturbing, especially the fact that he films all of these, these legal tours and sells them to people online, which is just an even more disturbing element to me that there are people out there that purchase the stuff and probably get off on it. But yeah, what do you think about McKamey Manor? Let me know in the comment section below. It's about time. But who didn't see this coming? That guy was a psychopath. I can't believe people were still going to this guy. And I can't believe he was still walking around freely. They were staying in an Airbnb. When they find this. A family was staying in an Airbnb. When they find a strange condensated window in the living room. Showing a secret underground section. As they decide to find their way down there in one of the bedrooms, they find this trap door leading to the pitch dark cave area. While exploring this haunting and disturbing area, they find red stains at the tunnel walls. In an old rusted mask. Why the crap would that be down there? I think this might be the beginning of a horror movie. We're watching how it starts. Who knew that one of the first companies to get jetpacks was Domino's Pizza. <laughs> what world are we living in? Now, I saw these jetpacks. Like, I saw that, like, the Navy had them, which makes sense. They were, like, boarding ships with them. And then I stopped seeing them until pizza delivery men, they're just, they're just flying to work, getting their pizzas reloaded, and then just flying to houses. I'm, the Jetsons didn't even predict this. Yo, that makes his job look super fun now. I think I want to deliver pizzas. That's a weird flex, but a cool one. I like this. I like this a lot. This is awesome. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> That bear, that bear got so close to touching him. He got so close. That was very stupid, my friend. What am I looking at? Ew. I don't know if I could eat that. I think that'd have to go in the trash, man. It's too gross looking. So good. <laughs> God, he's so that is the that creepiest thing. looking thing I've ever seen. Oh yeah, he just moved. <gasps> Alright, we're not doing this to harm him, just to see if he snaps. Oh yeah, no, he's alive. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> That's gonna haunt me in my sleep tonight. Can we keep looking to see if we can find a pair of spare underpants? <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy! Yeah, that was a disgusting little fish. This looks like it belongs at the bottom of the ocean, not wherever this is. It's so ugly, man. Balenciaga has to be a social experiment. Every time they drop a new clothing line, the outfits, bags, and shoes are extremely unflattering, and it feels like the fashion designer is playing a prank on their customers. One of their purses looks exactly like a trash bag and retails for almost $3,000, but that's not even the worst one. They also have a shirt that's stapled onto another shirt that goes for $1,300, but the models don't even look good wearing it. They also have these slippers that look like they're from Amazon or Shein, but they cost over 600 euros, which is about $700. Not to mention they have a bracelet that's made out of tape for over $1,000 and a Balenciaga comb that's over $500. Even their shoes look like Skechers or New Balances, but 
somehow are thousands of dollars. <laughs> Meanwhile, other designer shoes that look much more elegant like Prada's or Louis Vuitton's are half the price. But in my opinion, one of their worst products has to be their salt and vinegar chips bag, which is almost $2,000. But if you were carrying this around in public, it looks like you went to the gas station to get a quick snack. It also comes in spicy chili and cheese onion, but honestly, those don't look any better. They even released a pair of trainers which intentionally look destroyed that are around $2,000, but it doesn't even look like you can wear them. I want to know if there's anybody out there buying these things. $2,000 for a bag of chips, dude. $2,000. This tiger is all the proof that you need that skinwalkers are real. This is not normal behavior from an animal, especially a tiger. <laughs> Have you ever seen an animal sit like this? The AA is starting to look really good, but I'm worried about how many people are going to think that's real. <laughs> well, guys, that's all I have today. Thanks for hanging out with me again. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're awesome and I appreciate you. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.